Welcome to the CADFEM ANSYS tutorials. I would like to show you how we conduct a structural analysis to calculate the stress and deformation of a support component. We start ANSYS from within the CAD system, thereby transferring active geometry into the ANSYS workbench environment. Here on the left we select the appropriate type of analysis from those available. We want to calculate stress and deformation, so we select static structural. These analyses are linked to the geometry just imported via drag and drop and the analyses run through the appropriate steps from top to bottom. The type of analysis has been specified. We will examine the engineering data, i.e. the engineering material data, in a later demonstration. We now have the 3D geometry definition imported from CAD. The next step is therefore model construction. Clicking on the right mouse button allows us to edit the model thereby bringing us to the mechanical editor, which facilitates definition of the mesh, loading, constraints and results. We are working down the tree directory from top to bottom, i.e. first we select geometry and it opens up, and there we see the very component which we have just transferred from the CAD system. The material properties are predefined, structural steel. As already mentioned, we will look at the material properties in a later demonstration. So the next step, select the coordinate systems here. In this case we want to jump over this and concern ourselves with the mesh. A yellow strip of lightning signifies something still needs to be calculated here. I can perform this step, that's to say I can generate the mesh, using the right mouse button. This is a really rough standard mesh, but it's absolutely fine for our first step. And then we go over to definition of the load. We select static structural and we find the functions needed to define load and orientation located along the context sensitive function bar. There are various choices under loads. In this case we want to select a force. We can rotate our model using the middle mouse button then select the appropriate surface and complete the selection. Then we define the size and direction of the force by selecting a surface, we orient the vector, this red arrow, and also enter the force value. Definition of the force is now complete. In the next step we want to define boundary conditions. So under supports, we select fixed support, select the surface to be held, complete the selection using apply, and we've thereby defined the entire loading condition. In order to see all the loads and orientations, we select the loading condition once again, and we can now see the force that we wanted to apply, and the boundary condition which we defined. So good, finally we can begin the calculation using solve. And after a short time, the structural analysis is complete, as confirmed by the green tick marks. In order to see the results, we select the appropriate quantities, such as total deformation and the von Mises stress from the various results categories deformation, strain, stress and energy. We update our result once again using solve, not so as to recalculate the result but to extract results. And we can see things such as for example how our component deforms and what stresses are produced. So that the results will be more suitable for us, we alter the unit system to millimetres, kilograms and newtons so that we can thereby see our stresses in megapascals and our deformation in millimetres. So we see that with 10 kilonewtons, with 10,000 newtons, this bracket is deformed by 0.3 millimetres. The deformation is displayed in an exaggerated form in order to gain a better insight into the actual deformational behaviour. In addition to deformations, another interesting quantity is stress. We now see the stress distribution, which is still very crude, and we certainly need to do something in this connection in order to increase the precision of the mesh, i.e. of the calculation, but more of that in the next demonstration.